This is a bit of a weird one, isn't it? You probably heard that the Geneva Motor Show has been cancelled since the Swiss government banned events of a thousand people or more. And yet, here we are inside the stripped out, largely abandoned hall. This place should be teeming with sweaty, slightly stressed out people in suits, and yet it isn't. We heard that Koenigsegg still wanted to do its big reveal from its show stand. So we said, can we come along? And they said, yes. And this is what we're here to see, a new breed of Koenigsegg. It's called the Jumeirah, and it is quite simply a four seat hypercar. Hypercar performance, but with cup holders and heated seats, and it's real. They're gonna make 300 of these. And this is the finished production machine. And it's fast, as you'd expect, really fast. It's got 1700 horsepower, but it's a plug-in hybrid. It'll do 30 miles on electric power alone. The electricity part contributes about 1100 horsepower. Two motors on the back axle, another one on the crankshaft. The combustion part comes from, get this, a three cylinder, two liter, twin turbo, dry sump, free valve engine. A three cylinder engine producing 600 horsepower, that's 200 horsepower per cylinder. Mind officially bone. In fact, there's probably only one man in the entire world that actually understands, truly understands how this car works and why it exists. And it's the boss man himself, Christian von Koenigsegg. Christian, thank you for having us along to the Koenigsegg Motor Show. Well, thank you for coming to yeah. mayhem. You know, it's right, so just falling apart around us, but we built our own little fence here and pretend like nothing happened. Yeah, yeah, so sorry for the noises in the background, but it is, they're literally stripping out the show. Everything is falling down. As yeah. we speak, but wow, look at this. How long have you been keeping this? Uh, a secret? So the idea started back in 2003. Uh, we had our first son in 2001, and I started thinking, how do I get the family on board? And do I have to dilute the like supercar, mega car idea if we have more seats? So. I actually started making seating bucks and things back then, but the timing wasn't right. We were too small. The technology to package everything wasn't really there. So we had like two or three almost starts over the years, but then two years ago I said, now we're gonna do it. Tell us about the name Jumeirah, what does it mean? Yeah, so we were of course thinking about what should we call the car? And uh, we were having a family dinner with my parents and my mother came up with the name. Usually we try to do something Swedish. GE is to give in Swedish and Mira is more. So to give more, you get more seats, you get more space, uh, you get more, you can share the excitement, it's more excitement and, and, and uh, hopefully very little drawback, you know. All right, well, speaking of excitement, take us through the, um, the powertrain first. First of all, it is a mid-engine combustion car. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, in my mind, it's a proper, like, uh, traditional concept of a mega car. You have the combustion engine in the middle, you have the, the, the mid-engine look, uh, but then there are some tricks to this then. It's only a three cylinder, mm -hmm. but it's got our unique free valve technology that really transformed the way the engine can respond and sound and how it can run, in this case, a twin turbo setup mm -hmm. in sequential ways with the use of these free valves. Mm -hmm. So we have 400 Newton meters of torque at 1700 RPM wow. from a three cylinder. But it will uh, still rev up to... Eight, eight and a half. Oh. Uh, and, and we have 600 newton meters uh, over a broad rev range, and we have 600 horsepower, and the engine only weighs 70 kilos. So it was, per, I think, in this modern environment of downsizing and being frugal and being able to run on CO2 neutral fuels. I mean, this engine is designed for biofuels, for solar fuels. You can run it in worst case on petrol. You have this flex fuel capability, but that's not the idea. It's like running a, an EV on coal uh, power from a coal plant. You yeah. can do it, uh, but you shouldn't. But also for packaging as well, because you, you know you need to get these two rows of seats. You need to get the engine in. You need all that's your electric it. motors and the electronics. So it needed to be tiny. Yeah. And and we actually have a prop shaft going from the combustion engine to the front wheels. Yeah. So it's mid engine front wheel drive I see. Uh, with the help of our direct drive system. So the electric motor that's on the crankshaft, you got the three cylinder engine, the motor on the crankshaft, 400 horsepower. Yes, motor. so it's a total of 1,000 horsepower, 1,000 newton meters on the front. I love that. 1,000 uh, horsepower to the front axle. 
and then two more. Yeah, one, one, one 500 horsepower electrical motor each for each rear wheel mm -hmm. with a thousand newton meters each. Yeah. And when you combine all these numbers in, in, in a speed range, yeah. we don't top up the power levels on top of each other. We want to spread them out for torque. Sure. So if you look at our curves, we have 3,500 newton meters of torque yeah. and 1,700 combined horsepower. So this thing with four wheel drive, uh, four wheel torque vectoring, by yeah. the way, four wheel steering, it can do zero to 60 in 1.9 seconds. And top speed is 250 miles per hour, yeah, yeah. fast enough. Uh, and it has a range of 1,000 kilometers uh, if you juice up the battery full. That is 50 kilometer range with only battery. Where does the battery live here? It lives under the front seats. Okay. And so, how, how big is it in kilowatt hours? Uh, it's, uh, let's say, usable 15 kilowatt hours. Just give us the elevator pit. How does free valve work for a dummy like me? Right. So even the people who are not so versed in combustion engines knows, knows what a camshaft looks like. It's mm. kind of the little thing, the, the tube on top of the valves with, with uh, uh, loops on them, pushing the valves up and down so, with the springs. We throw that away <laughs> and then we put actuators over each valve so we can operate them individually when we want to open them, how much we want to open, and stay open. You know, with a, with a camshaft, if you would stay open, you would need to have a square camshaft profile, and it would jump off of the corners of the, of the, of the cam. So here, but as we don't have that, we can stay open, and wait for the piston, and then go back, or open half, and completely individual. So when you have four valves in one cylinder, normally with a camshaft, you open those two, you close those two, and so here we can just play different heights, not opening this one, only open for one turbo, open for two turbos, we throttle inside the cylinder from one combustion cycle to another. We can go from minimum power to maximum. There is no gasping. There is no filling of air into air intakes. Everything happens live in the combustion chamber in the most efficient way possible. So we even use AI. We work together with a company in Austin, Texas. So we have uh, AI control for the engine because it's so complex otherwise. Yeah. We just popped the hood so you can take a look at the um, how short that engine Because of course, if this was straight six this yeah it would be back here oh yeah ex exactly here. so we use that space for uh, something else yeah so there's your personalized luggage with the names of your family yeah on so one in the front touch. three in the in the rear full yeah. size carry-ons just while we're here i love these exhausts yeah the so Krapovich. i mean uh, we're working heavily with uh, akrapovich on this titanium exhaust system to make this three cylinder sound proper because the three is quite an interesting noise yeah. anyway a bit like a five cylinder exactly and i've been listening on three lit cylinders for a year now to try to make up my mind and yeah. And, and what's different with this one, it's a very big one. Normally a three cylinder is like a one liter engine. This is a two liter engine. Mm. So we have similar size pistons and stroke and bore like in our V8. Mm. So every combustion is big, <laughs> but it's just fewer of them. Yeah. But we can even run two stroke with this in certain RPM ranges. And then it sounds like a straight six. Yeah. Um, and you can really play with the free valves and the titanium uh, exosystem and some echoing effect. So it will have a u very unique sound, but a big sound. It's not like a silly, tiny yeah. thing. Let's talk about the, the way this car looks. You don't straight away notice it's a, it's a full True. seat. True. We tricked the eye a little bit. Mm. Uh, everything is blown up proportionally. So we have 22-inch wheels, the largest uh, carbon fiber wheels, 21 inch in the front. Yeah. So they are bigger. Uh, and then there is no handle on the door like we normally don't have. So there is no like human size component that you can reference to the size of the car. Yeah. So, so if you take the, like a normal car and, and press uh, like uh, enlarge it by 1.25%, yeah. it becomes this. This reeks of you. You said, look, I want the, I want the four seater, but it has to have one door. It has of to course, have no B door. pillar. So, so your um, engineers are sort of measuring the size of this door. This was a nightmare, yeah. this size. How do you make that, something like that work? Right, it's so the, the, the hinge is very beefy. Yeah. It's actually hollow steel now instead of aluminium mm -hmm. because it needed that stiffness. Yeah. And then it's a lot of carbon fiber reinforcements in the door. Yeah. But the twisted part, which is our new patent, mm -hmm. is but by not adding any components, so we did it first for the ESCO, mm -hmm. we kind of bent around the parts in CAD and suddenly we got another feature that the door doesn't not only swing out and rotate, it also swings upwards. So you can clear all the curves. Uh also the large roof structure gives a lot of rigidity yeah. so this is what as far as we're aware it's the stiffest four-seater car on the planet yeah. from axle to axle it's uh, 40,000 newton meters per degree stiffness so that, what's the what's the what's the total weight what, what yeah so that's the getting? advantage of a uh, smaller battery pack uh, super efficient small combustion engine with a lot of power so our aim is uh, 1880 uh, curb weight with almost a full tank of fuel um, and that with this kind of performance power level and range, if this was pure electric, our calculation says like 2.3 tons maybe. So that, that is the advantage, apart from if you like sound. So you're preempting my question as, why didn't you just make it all electric? Yeah, Too heavy. That's the reason. We can make it lighter for the same type of 
power mm. and, and size, but of course, performance becomes also better because when it's lighter, braking becomes better, cornering becomes better, and actually acceleration becomes better. I really want to feel what it's like to of be course. A, this thing coming towards you. Yeah, watch out, ah, oh, scary. <laughs> Great, actually, because you've got your arm naturally goes yeah. there. You've got another arm rest so over here. So here will be wireless phone charger, and yeah. then you have uh, eight cup holders. Yeah. Uh, uh, one hot and one cold for each person. They will be a little bit bigger in the in the final. We actually put a peltier element in between the front and rear uh, cup holders on each side. So when one uh, holder gets hot, the other gets cold from the Peltier effect. Yeah. So uh, you can keep your, your milkshake going there for an hour or two and watch Netflix and, uh, so, and, and yeah, travel so at 400 kilometers per hour. So big screen in the back, big screen in the front. You were saying it's, it's, uh, you're not a second class no, citizen exactly. if you're in the back. I, I envision this car, like, uh, of course, we'll see if that ever happens, but someone driving up to the Oscars gala, there is the red mm -hmm. carpet there, and the star climbs out from the back. Mm -hmm. There is no folding of seats or past the B pillar. Yeah. You walk out kind of gracefully, as well as you were sitting in the front. I think it's simple. It is a mega car, a Koenigsegg mega car, with two more seats. And of course, there is no bracket in the industry for this. Uh, I mean, the, the most extreme luxury or uh, expensive four seats you can get is a Rolls Royce. This, this has nothing to do with the Rolls Royce. It's a completely different experience. We kind of saw it as a hole in the marketplace. I built it because I wanted it personally. Mm -hmm. And this is my type of car and it didn't exist. Okay, so you're gonna build 300 of these cars. That's quite a lot for Koenigsegg, isn't it? It, it is a, a new uh, benchmark for us. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we did 80 of the Regiera. That sold out quicker than we thought. So we raised the bar with the Esco said, let's try for 125. That went in a few days. That was last year. Yeah. Um, and this is a, a little bit more of the family car and so on. So it comes in at, at a slightly lower price bracket. And in, in can order you tell to make us what that. The price is? I, I, yeah, I can. Yeah. But, but in order to make that work, we need a little bit higher volume. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, the new marketplace, the unique segment, a slightly lower but still expensive price makes it possible. Mm -hmm. So in, in US dollar land, they start at like in that region, they start at 1.7. 1.7, okay. Still very expensive, of course. Still very expensive, but look. But you get the same, but with two more seats. Exactly. <laughs> You're getting more. Uh, Gemera. Gemera, that's there it. There we go. Uh, well, I can confidently say it's the star of the show. Oh, uh, I think I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Christian. Yeah, thanks, Jack. Yeah.